Oh, welcome back to the webway. This podcast is brought to you by You Know Clothing. We've got some new hoodies dropping next week uh, for pre order, so go check them out online www.youknow.co.nz. Other than that, got the bro on today, Ty. Ty, what's up, G? How are you? Good, bro. Good. good. Thanks for having me, bro. Good to, good to have you on, bro. For, um, people that don't know who you are, bro, do you sort of want to say who you are and what you do? Me? Um, I'm Ty, Jack Webster, the first <laughs> from uh, the Naughty North Shore. I uh, play basketball, have been doing so pretty much my whole life. That's pretty much it, bro. You have been really hooping. I mean, people that don't know, I actually, I've known Ty for, for, for ages. We've been giving him buckets since I was about, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> since I was about 13. Nah, hey, no lie, though. <laughs> Low key, no lie. <laughs> <laughs> now, we had some good run-ins, bro, but nah, um, good to have you on, brother. And I guess to start off with, bro, uh, a big announcement came out recently that you've You've signed on with the Breakers for two more years, bro. How how did that come about? Yeah, so I mean, I mean, at end of year negotiations and stuff. So just home team always want to holler and stuff. Gave everyone a chance in the league to holler, but yeah, you know, Breakers obviously just came with the best deal, and you know they like what they saw last season, and they just wanted to you know go forward in that direction, and you know, luckily you know it was just I was in a fortunate position to be able to you know stay home and take it. You bro, know? hard. You enjoy you enjoy being at home, like obviously because you've been away in like what Turkey, Germany. You know, do you, obviously I guess there's pros and cons, yeah. but like, uh, do you like it rather than you know being home yeah. rather than being away? I love it, bro. I'm huge on family and stuff, yeah. bro. I love being with the family and stuff. And I've already spent so much time away, bro. I've been away from home since I was like 17, 18, mm. about just about yeah. So I love being home, bro. So it's so hard not to come back, but at the same time, you know, it's go out and you know conquer the world type buzz if. Get if you get out there, and I, I miss being out there and playing over there, honestly. But you know, it is, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's part of the the journey I'm on right now, and this is where it's taken me for sure. And I guess, I guess, has COVID fucked that situation up a, a little bit for some people, like trying to get back over there and stuff? Or now is it just like, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, the deals were a little bit like some of the contracts were because you know, like we got sent back last year when I was playing in, oh sorry, the year before last when I was playing in uh, Turkey. So the the contracts this for the following year were kind of a little bit like if that pops off again, then you know we might and we send everyone home, then it's just going to be nah game over. It's like we're not going to pay dudes out and stuff like full oh. contracts and stuff like that. So at the time, you know, it was kind of a safe option for me, you know, even like to you know in hindsight, I could have gone back over there because they played a full season, got a full season and everything. But I mean, at the time, it was you know with the information I had, it was probably the right decision to just stay. For sure. Oh, so they could literally be like, yeah, yeah, you come back and play, but, you know, we might send you home if COVID hits again. Is that what would have happened or? Yeah, for sure, bro. And all, and, bro, all countries, everyone that plays overseas knows, bro, like the money over there, bro, it's, it's never like all the way guaranteed, you know, you never know what you're going to run into, bro. Clubs get a little shysty and stuff like that with, sure. with the money over there, you know, in, in certain countries, bro. So, you know, it's, it's nothing to play with, bro, you know. Yeah, I've heard some fucked up shit about that. Eh? Oh, it's, hey, good to have you back here, bro. Hopefully catch some games this season. But hey, let's yeah. let's flip the time all the way back, bro, because I know you've had a pretty mean journey, you know, coming from a basketball family. But um, you said you're from the Nori North. Um, what 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 school did you yes. yeah What school did you go to, bro? Growing up, Westlake. Westlake College. Westlake. Yeah. Westlake yeah. boys. How was that, bro? You enjoy it? Uh, but honestly, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> what the school or yeah, just uh, the school, bro? I mean, you know, I got, I got love for Westlake, and then, you know, and it was it was a tough time for me. I just wasn't the type of dude that enjoyed school mm. from the get go, bro. And you know, the teachers, are, the teachers there always went so supportive of like a young, overly confident dude, like coming up, just knowing what <laughs> what buzz he's gonna be on when he leaves. So I didn't really take school too seriously, but. Did all the work that I needed to do to, you know, get get set up so I could go to the States and, you know, follow my dreams and shit yeah. like that. Did you, obviously, basketball was in a massive part of your life and solos and still, I mean, going forward it will be, but what did you do other than basketball, bro, at Westlake? We, did you play any other sports? Yeah, bro, I played them all, bro. Just fucking around with the homies, bro. Like, played volleyball for pretty much my whole time there. Oh, played true. a little like bit of rugby, bro. <laughs> <laughs> World star offense, but couldn't tackle a soul. <laughs> <laughs> so if the all blacks need me on the wing, holler. Um, eyeballs and whatnot. Um, Warriors, too. <laughs> Correct. Um, Fucking might need you, bro. <laughs> if I, whatever, G, I do it all. Uh, what else did I play? Touch, too. 
I was looking nice on the touch. Baby. Hey. Dudes don't want to see me at touch. They know I, They know about me. I'm yeah? in this. Yeah, they know about me. Well, like you actually played like tournaments and shows. Yeah, fucking bro, nationals, all of that. Oh, hey. We was down there at nationals. Like, yeah. Like, we was the, from the North Shore playing these. We were playing like Hamilton Boys and like True. all of them, you know, like dudes who went on to be like all blacks and shit. You Fuck. Know, like, for real. So you played a lot of sport, but you said you didn't really like school. Was that just because... The system, I mean, obviously the system's only fucking fit for one sort of person, and I don't even like school, bro, but is, is that why, or you just sort of knew, I'm going to be a hooper anyway, so I don't give a fuck? Exactly, bro. Yeah. I just knew, bro. Like, ever since I was little, bro, just, whenever anyone asked what I was going to do, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm going to America to play ball, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just knew, like, you know, I mean, I didn't know, obviously, <laughs> you know, anything could have happened, but I just, I just, I just felt like that was the only thing, I put everything into that, you know, I didn't have a plan B, I didn't, didn't have any other passions or interests outside of, you know, playing basketball. You know, I fucked around playing volleyball and rugby and all yeah. that stuff, but that was just the pastime, you know, just with to the hang homies. out with the homies and whatnot. For sure, for sure. And obviously, you, you got an older brother, Corey. He must have been, and even your dad, bro, who's a hooper. I mean, yeah. how has that impacted you as, as, a, as a hooper, bro, having them there? Yeah, huge. It was kind of just like it was born into it, bro. I was like late nights at the YMCA, you know, every other night watching either my dad or my brother or even my mum played like social basketball oh, as yo. well with her like homies and shit like that. So like every night I was pretty much just at the gym, just running around, you know, not even, I wasn't even like necessarily interested in playing ball at that time, just mm. fucking running around causing a ruckus, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. climbing under the bleachers, collecting all the money up and shit, all the change <laughs> and shit that. like that, you know, like shit, little shit like that, the event center every night. And then just eventually just, you know, I'd jump on the court and, you know, be able to, sh when I was big enough to shoot on the hoop and stuff, I'd jump on at half time and yeah. shit like that. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, for sure. People in the crowd give you a little clap and whatever. <laughs> you feeling yourself, you know, I used to be the king of that, bro. Yeah. Especially going to Corey's, like, school games and stuff, bro. I remember, like, these are prim school games on Friday nights, bro. I couldn't wait for half time. I'd just come out on the court. And I'm just putting on shows and shit. You yeah. Know, like, that was, like, the fake dance. And I just fell in love with it from there, bro. Yeah. Fuck, speaking of Corey, bro, he was a hooper at high school, eh, bro? He used to have, like, 40s, 50s. I remember Dangerous. I remember seeing that Westlake team he was in with Tom Abercrombie and that motherfucker. That, Tom Abercrombie was windmilling, bro, and, and the warm-ups and shit. And Crazy. I'm, like, 5'2", like, looking up like this, and I'm like, what the fuck? And that's back in the day when dudes wasn't really doing windmills and shit like that. Like, yeah. now, because, like, high school kids is freaks now doing all types of shit. But, like, back then, like, that was, if you could windmill and shit back then, like, you was super nice. For sure, for sure. So after Westlake, bro, um, what did you do? You obviously, because did you always, because you went to Nebraska, but like, did you mm. always know, oh yeah, my path, I got to get my NCA credits or whatever, sign, do the SAT and go to college? Or were you sort of just taking it day by day? Bro, I was laxing, bro. I pretty much, um, like by the time, by the time I got to seventh form year, my th year 13, I, I kind of just, I kind of just like had left it and, like was in a really bad position like with all my schoolwork and stuff and i was taking like shitty like rock climbing classes and stuff like that like just stuff that would translate to nothing over in the states because of and our systems like was different we had the ncaa double uh, NC, oh, sorry ncaa ncea system and they yeah. got like the whatever system the american school system over there so like yeah. and they use grade point average and uh, my grade point average would like transfer over like terrible yeah so i just i like, by the seventh form year, I was just, like, scrambling around, just, like, trying to retake all these papers and yeah. all these, like, assignments and stuff so I could just, like, get eligible to even, like, sit the SAT and stuff like that. So, luckily, I had a, I had a, uh, my, my prems coach there, Mr. Eves, Ben Eves, was a, uh, a dean at, at Westlake at the time, and he knew what it was for me. Like, he was the prems coach basketball, you know, he wanted me to follow my dream. He was, yeah. like, proud of me, so he kind of, like convinced all my teachers to kind of let me like go back and like redo all the things I could mm. redo and like get all the points I could get so just so I'd be eligible so like I wouldn't even really been able to do it without him so True. Like, lucky yeah, is there that he it. came in and helped me out with that I, tr I fucking translate real shit eh? Cause I even did an SAT bro and that shit like I wasn't I wasn't the smartest at high school, but I wasn't the dumbest for sure. And doing the SAT, bro, it was almost like a memory test bro it was fucking hard eh? it was crazy bro I said it 
seven times or some shit, bro. And yeah. they're expensive as fuck. They bro. are, bro. My and how was long so are they? mad at me. But I went over to Aussie and studied for like a month with some with this Aussie tutor, bro, who sure. helps like all the students and stuff. Just because my grade point average was so shit from like the rock climbing and the food <laughs> tech and just all the bullshit classes I was doing, like thinking <laughs> I was rock thinking climbing. I'm like sussing it at West, like like yeah, I'm getting these rock climbing credits. I'm <laughs> camping and shit, cooking all these feeds and shit, and, like, and then like <laughs> fucking shit Ramsey. Yeah, and then the fucking oh, <laughs> turn around and bit me in the ass. Yeah, and then yeah, but, but that's because there was nothing, you bro. know, no one telling you, right? Yeah, didn't know, and then all of a sudden they hit me with the, all the requirements, so I just redid all them papers, fucking set the SAT, went over to Aussie, studied, fucking set the SAT another six times before pass, oh, like getting bro. the, because I had to get a massive score, Not yeah, just like some, yeah, as an idiot or something, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, I had yeah. to get like a real high ass score just because my grade point was so bad. Oh, true. Mm. Had to make up for it. Yeah. Because yeah. they have to balance each other out. You know, if you have like a massive grade point, it doesn't necessarily matter about your, your um, SAT. SAT you know, oh. Like vice versa, if you have a big SAT, it's not so much. They kind of have to balance out over there. Because was there ever an option to go to uh, like a, a junior college and then to college? Or were you like, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to yeah. go straight. I didn't want to, but that was more just like pride. Like, I don't want. I just want to go straight, get yeah. to work. I want to get into college and stuff. But like, yeah, definitely that was an option for a while, you know, mm. especially when I was like sitting at like six times and I couldn't get anywhere near the score or anything like that. I'm not, I, mean, I was getting near the score, but I couldn't get the score and stuff like yeah. that. So like, it was definitely, I was definitely going to have to go on a different route. And then just luckily I just kind of just... Cracked it. You're going oh. over to obviously helped a lot, you know, studying with that lady as well. That's mean. Shout so, out to her. Bro, hard. So that whole college process, you know, getting scouted because obviously you're a um, you're a carver in New Zealand, bro. You you know, everyone knew who you were. You're you're a hooper. And what was the whole process of like? What was it like when all these teams were like? Were there a few teams coming for you? Like obviously Nebraska was yeah, one yeah. of them. Did you yeah. have any others on the table? No, yeah, I had quite a few. I had like schools like LSU looking at me. My dad went to Hawaii and oh. Isaac was at Hawaii, so they wanted me to come to Hawaii as well. Um, I had like Pitt because of Steve as well. Steve Adams was at Pitt and so they had like, they were talking. Um, Shit, imagine if you were in there. That for real. That like, Lord, those, if I knew what I knew now, like, you know, yeah. it'd be crazy. But at the time, I just knew nothing, bro. Yeah. But yeah, like other, yeah, a couple of other small schools, schools in LA, like uh, yeah. UC Irvine and stuff like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, Nebraska and I think maybe Clemson, maybe. Oh, yeah. And hollered for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of schools that like, they send you like lots of letters and stuff, you know, mm. like, like just to, you know, you're on, they're on your mind, you know, to so that you're, they're on your radar and yeah. stuff like it's different when the schools actually like offer you like the scholarships and stuff like that. Yeah, did you, yeah quite did a few schools reached out for sure. That's dope. Did you go on any vi uh, any visits? Bro, I went on one to Nebraska and then like got st like stunned by yeah, it. Like me and my family, like me, my mom, and my dad were just like, oh fuck. Oh, they all like, went. Yeah, they, oh, they yeah they flew us all out. Went there. We went to a football game and shit. There's like hundred thousand people like in the stadium. Like sold out every single game for like the last fifty years or some shit like that. Oh shit! And then we went to a ball game and like that sold out. And like they're putting me on the jumbotron and me and my family and shit like Holy that. Fuck. Like it was fuck. They got they got us so good, bro. That's why I say if I knew now, like yeah, yeah. And then like they got us so good. And at the time, I still hadn't passed the SATs, so I was gonna have to like you get five visits to college, so you have to choose your top five. Yeah, just so sorry, people that don't know what visits are like visits. Uh, you go to a school and they're basically trying to like sell the school to you so like um you know like so if, if you've got a mean school then you're gonna like as as uh Tyler said like they'll they'll show you all the cool the cool parts yeah, and yeah. Then you get there i mean it can be like that but sometimes yeah. it's not right they'll even like throw you a couple of little yeah little shorties on the side yeah. type like schools just go as far as that as far as uh, cash everything i wasn't getting the cash and yeah. stuff but like that like schools will do that for sure Fuck. Um, but yeah, anyways, I just, and I hadn't passed the SAT, so I had to keep on, I was going to have to keep on going between back from the States and New Zealand and oh. then set the SAT and then go to the next visit five times. And like to get to Nebraska was already a 26 hour like travel time from Auckland. So I'm like, oh, yo, doing this back and forth Bro. five times, like, and I can't, pass, you know, I'm feeling like I'm never going to pass the yeah. test as well. So I was just like. You know, like by the time I was done with the visit there, I was already like sold on pretty much. Yeah. I wanted to go here and I was going to take the other visits, but then they kind of just like applied the pressure. Like, oh, we might sign someone else if uh, you leave. You know, we got this little kid from Memphis and he's really good. And we're like, you know, it's between you and him. Like, it's like a real, that's when it gets real businessy, like, you know, and it's like making big decisions. And we were about to leave, bro, at the airport, come back to Auckland. 
I hadn't signed or nothing like that. And then my dad just looked over at me. He's just like, are you sure you don't want to come here? Like, you sure you don't want to sign? Like, they might take the other dude. And then he just got me. But I'm just like, oh, nah, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. And then they came, though. They rushed back to the airport before we got on the flight, signed all the papers, shipped it away. I was done. I was locked in. Damn. But you can get out. That's just the, that's just an agreement. You can get out of it. Is that uh, like, is it? No, so that's a, because I know there's like verbal commitments, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And there's like. So verbal is just your word. Like you just say, I'm, I'm going to go. And that's initially I, I gave them a verbal, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to come for sure. Yeah. And because like, that's anything, you know, you can, you can say, say what that. the fuck yeah, you want. For real. <laughs> <laughs> so Nebraska, so how, how was that whole experience, bro? Walking your first day into college campus. How was it? Bro, it was crazy. It was, it was like such a crazy environment, like just. Such an easy environment to make friends. Like right. everyone's there. Like especially because you're all put in like the freshman dorms and shit like there. So everyone. Oh, there's, true. Yeah, like girls and boys and everything. And it's the summer school, so no one knows what the fuck is going on. We're just like don't even know where the classes are. Just aimlessly walk around this fucking huge campus. Yeah. And the whole school's not there in the summer. It's just the people who are in summer school. Mm. So there's only like just the athletes, pretty much. Yep. So you meet all the athletes, cool. all the shit, and you get to like you get your homies and shit because that's who you spend the most time with, anyways. Cause like all the athlete shit is separate from the whole school. Mm. Like we have all our own like cafeterias and like shit like that. I mean, oh, no, seriously? Our classrooms we go to the same and shit like that. But like we got our own study areas Fuck. and shit like that. Yeah, it's, it's legit. Like, bro, yeah, it's it's crazy, like bro. Like fucking royalty. <laughs> yeah, and it's everything, bro. It's everything that like the movies say it yeah. was. You know, like the parties are like that. Like the girls are like that. The, it's a craziness. We're all in dorms, like. You know, 50,000 fucking horny students just all living to get, like, you know, they're not everyone's on campus, but we're all just, like, in the area, you know, Tinder's uh, booming. <laughs> oh, I bet. Holy shit. <laughs> so you go there, like, in, in terms of, you know, compared to New Zealand, like, take us through what what it's like going to, like, a, I don't know, like a, like, a what's a typical day for you over there at college? Bro. If we're, if it's in the season. Yeah, in season, in season. In season. Six probably like six a.m. Or it's like six thirty. Weights like conditioning probably. Yeah. Not even weights, just straight running on the track, running, and then we'll do that for like an hour. Fuck. And then we'll like sprints type of shit. Or yeah, like? bro. Like all that condition cardio, bro. Like hills, anything, like whatever he's feeling that day, just to break us type shit. You know. Holy shit. And then we'll do, and then we'll go to class, and then so you go to class till about whenever you, whenever you go to class, or even if you go to class, you know, a lot of people don't even. <laughs> <laughs> but uh go to class do all of that and then eat lunch probably go to the cafeteria probably go back to class as well after you probably got like three classes a day on average yeah some days too and then after that probably it's time for practice 3 p.m so and then that's like where we really go after it. you know that's two hours of just like beating each other up on the court like yeah college practices is no joke just physical oh sure you know to the point of it's like almost stupid you know and they're just you know we're just diving on the floor taking charges like just getting it stupid, stupid. Yeah, stupid bro. but like you know it's making us you know it's making us tough it's like bringing us together make you know stuff like that you know there's always a reason behind it and shit but anyways practice and then boat if you didn't get your lift in during the day like if you're a freshman, you probably have a set time where you have to lift, and it's probably during, like in between the classes, like you have to get your weights in. If you're like an upperclassman, you know, senior, sophomore, something like that, junior, then you get to, then you probably get to choose your uh, your wait time, oh, so you can do yo. it before practice or you can do it after practice. Yeah, but yeah, but for pretty much like three workouts a day, bro, just damn grind every day too, and like going to class, and they're on your ass to go to class. Really, like you have to, like you're supposed to go. Yeah, but, you know. Can you get in trouble not going to class? If your grade point average, like if you if you're not handing in the work, you don't necessarily have to like attend class yeah. unless there's like an attendance points or something. But yeah. like, you know, there's obviously a certain amount you have to go. But if you're handing in all the work and shit, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah, someone's in New Zealand, bro. Yeah. So, the, so was it like what you expected though, rocking out to college? Like, were you like, fuck, this is like I'm here. This this is what I expected. Like, obviously, you said the girls, the fucking yeah, yeah. parties. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. would you get in trouble though? Like, you know. Going to yeah, the parties? Bro. Fuck, I got in trouble, like, my freshman year quite a bit, bro. First before the season even started, bro. I'm, I'm out there in, in the... <laughs> I'm in there in the fucking... Uh, in the clubs, bro. <laughs> Down there in the clubs on Corey's ID. I got his fucking learner's driver's license, bro. And, like, <laughs> You're I'm 18? just in the club, bro, just, just vibing and shit. Like, thinking I'm the man. And then all of a sudden, these two dudes just come grab me, bro, and just, like, take me to the back. And they're like... 
give your ID, like show your ID. Like I'm like, yeah, we good, we good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it right here, yeah. chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, boom. Corey's like fucking 25 or something on the ID. I'm like 18 or you know, like that, like something like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, I ain't like you're a freshman. Like we like we know who you are. Like yeah. you just came to the school, blah blah blah. We seen you on TV, all that. And I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, you got me. They, they take the ID, so I got no more ID. Like I'm oh, done with shit. like with, with the fakie, anyways. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Now. And then like, bro, and the bro, the police came and got me, bro. Put me in the fucking car, handcuffs, like behind everything, bro. I'm like thinking this is a wrap already. Like yeah. I'm gonna send my ass home. Shit, bro. I'm in the car, and then all of a sudden, bro, he's like on the phone to someone, and it must have been like the school or something, yeah. bro. And then all of a sudden, he just like lets me, like, he's like just get out of here, like takes the cuffs off him, like gives get me a fine, oh, and I just, bro. bro, I had to do like community service and shit, bro. I had to go fucking. Work at the church and shit. Like, <laughs> so that yeah, must have been a bit bro. of a rude awakening. Oh, eh? from the jump, from the jump, Fuck. it was crazy. So I kind of like chilled out after that. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's but the trip, the parties was quite. You know, parties was getting broke up every week. Police was coming in and shit. It was just a matter about how fast you can run, but if you can get away, but yeah, light of all. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know me. Like, I'm I'm from the NS. I'm getting away. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Benji. Hey, I'm putting all the wax on. All that. <laughs> They ain't seen those moves. Yeah. So going into Nebraska, obviously, like, must have been different experience playing. Like, how how did it differ from New Zealand basketball, bro? Because college basketball, I know it's yeah. a, it's a lot different game, right? It's a, it's a, so how how was the difference? Was it an easy transition? Nah, bro. It was probably the first like reality check, like basketball wise for me. You know, yeah. like coming up in New Zealand, like full of confidence and you're like always felt like I was the best player at like in my age group or like pretty much any room For I sure. stepped into you know like just that's just the type of confidence like I came up with and like going to college was the first time I kind of like felt like I wasn't you know and it, mm. like dudes were like legitimately better than me and it felt like I couldn't get better than them you know mm. like to that point and like so that's kind of when I got my first like that's when my confidence started to dwindle and you could tell and it like started fucking me up like yeah Mentally? Conf- yeah, mentally, bro. I was just all, my freshman year was terrible, bro, just because of my confidence, bro. Like, I could play. I started, you know, like, I cooked them at practice and everyone knows I could play. Yeah. But just my confidence was so bad, bro. Just whatever, I don't know. I just let doubt and just worrying, shit like that. Uh, sorry, creeping. Yeah. First time being away from home, you know, classic freshman. Yeah, and you're young, bro. Are you 18? Yeah, bro. Yeah, 18. You're like, first yeah, time away. I'm living really? in America now, you know, I ain't got. Uh, no, no, I ain't got no one. I'm just like out here by yeah. myself. I feel like you know. Would have been a bit of pressure as well, obviously, because you're on scholarship, yeah, coming yeah. all the way from New Zealand. Heaps Everyone's pressure, like, "Who bro. the fuck's this guy?" Heaps of pressure, but it's like you know, everyone goes through it. It's classic freshman shit, but yeah. you know, you know, a lot, some are fortunate to not go through it. You know, like, but you know, I had you know, and it made me, it made me way better. You know, it taught me how to grind as well. You know, yeah. I put a chip on my shoulder and shit like that. You know, like yeah. seeing myself at that level like made me feel like okay, yeah, I'm never gonna go back down to that. Like I'm never gonna let my confidence ever waver again. Like yeah. to that point where I'm like, you know, I can't yeah. even play how I play. You know, so it was a huge learning step for me. Was it quite restricted though? Because like I know, like you hear stuff like. You know, some coaches are so crazy in college, like you can't shoot for the first twelve seconds of the shot clock. You gotta, you gotta yeah, yeah. run the plays for a bit, and then you know, in the last eight seconds of the shot clock, you can you can sort of score. Was it quite, was it quite, um, you know, uh, half court based for you, or was it? Um, we like to run a lot. We like we oh, had yeah. some runners on our team, bro. And we had we had like athletic as wings, so we so kind of just go. But yeah, we kind of we were more like the team where we kind of just had like our guys, and we just got the shots for them. You oh, know, like, yeah, so like yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like which I didn't mind. I was playing the point anyways. You know, like it was good for mm. me. I was just distributing, like working on that, trying to get that part of my game. Yeah. Know? And um, but like we had like like real good guys, you know, and, and guys the, the names are like Siobhan Shields, Terran Pitaway, guys who plays overseas in Europe now and stuff. Like Siobhan plays in the Euro League now. Oh shit, he's legit, bro. That's my boy. But like we had, we like used to just get shots for him and stuff mm. like that. So it was real structured. And so they're like, but like if you fucked up, especially if you were a freshman or something, it's cutthroat. It's like nah, fuck off. Actually, like you bench like straight oh. away. Like, but I used to start every game, first mistake of the game, no matter like it could be like twenty seconds and up. Out like if I get a turnover, dribble it off my foot, something crazy, you know, like something that's, unlucky, that's, uncontrollable. Well, that's why <laughs> it's fucking mentally hard for you. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what you're thinking, right? For sure, bro. And then like you know, so then they're just like beating them. But you know, you learn as you go up. You know, as a freshman, and you go up, and and that's then you know, and 
as the coach starts to begin, you know, you build a relationship and yeah. trust you more and shit like that, it, it stops and stuff like that. And you just get better. You get better from that. Like it's just a form of coaching. Yeah, for sure. Who was who are some of the players that you uh, that you know people might know that you played against in college? Because I know you played against some hoopers. Oh, I played Miles Bridges. Was at um, Miles Bridges plays for Charlotte. Yeah, right? Hornets. he played. He was at. He's a fucking Michigan. athlete. He was at Michigan when I was at Nebraska. We were in the same conference. I played him a couple times. Was he nice? Bro, freak. Yeah, freak. And he was like man body from the jump. Like freshman, he came in like just. He had that fucking like mellow body like already jumping over athletic you. Athletic though. Fuck. Um, I didn't play against Taco, but I seen Taco. We was at the same tournament with Taco. Seven foot seven dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was at a tournament with Taco in Charleston. How does that guy even move, eh, bro? Oh, it's crazy. That's a superhuman, bro. That I don't know. That's crazy. Um, who else did I play? Devonte Graham. He went to Kansas, plays for Charlotte yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's nice. I played against Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball was at UCLA. You I played, played against him? him? I played him in a tournament, guarded him the whole game, cooked him. Did go, you? Go look up those highlights. Actually? Nah, nah. <laughs> I mean, they, uh, they won. They won, so they won. Yeah, yeah, but I got off. I but got off. I was getting my shit. Fuck All right, I'll fucking... If I, look if that up. If there's a up. YouTube, I'll put it in the link. Yeah, I'll yeah, put yeah. it in the link. Put a couple in the bio, of, sorry. Cu- put a couple of slick buckies on his head right there. <laughs> um, he was shooting like those too, like across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugly ass shit. Bro. Um, who else? That's some big names. That's all I can uh, remember off the top. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, there's some, there's some pretty big names, though. So, I mean, <clears throat> out of the four years, because obviously you, you're in Nebraska for four years, right? Yeah. What was your favorite year and why? <sighs> I mean, it doesn't have to be basketball. It could be like, yeah. you know, my uh, whatever. I mean, my freshman year, we went to the tournament. Oh, the NCAA true. Tournament. So that was a lot of fun. But we got kicked out straight. We were in the first round. So we got Lost there. to Baylor. Yeah, which was dope. And it was a dope experience. Like, and heaps of people go whole college cruise without even going there. So I was lucky. But probably, like, I think probably, like, my junior year yeah. was the most fun. Because I kind of, like, was getting my game back. You know, mm. like, freshman year was shit. Struggled. Sophomore, sophomore year, like they kind of like took me out of my role, mm. like recruited more point guards oh, like to, in front of me type, like younger point guards in front of me type thing. So I kind of like moved to the two, but then was still just kind of grinding and like you know had less of a role, but like did good, did okay in that role, yeah. you know. So I was like kind of had a little bit more confidence and stuff yeah. like that. And then like by my junior year, I was kind of like back into like another. I had a good role on the team, and I was yeah. like felt like I was getting my game back. Cool. Shit like that, you know, or confidence was up and shit like that, and just life was good, bro. bro at that time, that must have been hard for you though. So they're fucking bringing in point guards. You're like, bro, I'm right here. Yeah, bro, that is what it is, though. But yeah. every year they got, they you know they got to bring them in. You know, like yeah. they got to bring players in every year. Like, and it, it sucks. It's like fucking, you know, massive shot at the ego, at the pride and shit like that. But you know, it's just competition, bro. Bro, give them some young bows in the fucking. All training. of that, bro. And that's not what happens, bro. The yeah. freshmen get treated like shit, bro. Yeah. Like, if, you know, like they're not getting no foul calls, nothing. Yeah, make or break type shit. Yeah, up. fuck yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So coming out of Nebraska, bro, you finished your uh, senior year. Did you sort of, you know, obviously being a basketball, any basketball, it doesn't matter how good or how bad you are, you know, you want to make the NBA. Is that what you were? Trying to, try to you know go for yeah still yeah honestly still, still trying to go fucking for a hundred percent you still young how old are you yeah twenty six just turned twenty six this still year still young as fuck bro look at TC yeah. Tory Craig shout out in the NBA finals the man the bro didn't crack it what is he now twenty nine I remember coming down to Wellington and watching him at the Saints bro like we we're probably on the pistol night yeah. before <laughs> yeah for real I remember just watching him like bro what, like what is he doing here but <laughs> then you know but yeah. Crazy Shout out to him, worked it, worked it all the way up. Crazy thing about him, bro, is he can literally do something different every night. Like, I remember um, PC, shout out to Pierre Cameron, or, or, was him or Zico, anyway, one of the two, would just be like, yo, we want you to fucking lock him up tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want you to go get 15 boards. He's a dog, eh? We want you to go get eh? 40, bro. You know, and he can do all of that, so. Yeah. I mean, that's why he's where he's at, bro. He's fucking Swiss Army knife, bro. Yeah, for real. So, yeah, coming out of Nebraska, did you, you went to the draft, right? Got undrafted? How was that whole process? Yeah, I mean... Wasn't like expecting to get drafted or anything mm. like that, you know. I had um, after college though, I had worked out for like six NBA teams. Yeah. I think just like they invite like groups of you know college players that they like, yeah. and they come in. You just come in and you kind of just like fucking showcase, you know. It's like just sitting <laughs> Do some around, drills? like fucking all the owners and shit. Like 
I worked out at Charlotte and shit, and he's just like fucking, you know, Michael Jordan's sister and shit like that, all just like sitting, standing up at the top. There's like Michael and shit just standing up at the top, just like sitting down watching the workout and shit, like nerve wracking shit. Like, yeah, it's crazy, crazy bro. shit. Like went to I worked and up like, for up, bro? worked up for Golden State, you know, like Javel McGee and fucking Steve Kerr were just like up in the glass, just like watching the workout. Shit was like nerve wracking as fuck. But like yeah, went and worked out for a couple NBA teams. This is before the draft. Yeah. Worked out for a couple NBA teams, and then, and then you kind of just wait, you know, and just kind of just see if they have a spot for you, yeah, and such shit like that, you know, like roster spots to fill, you know, and obviously not expecting to go, you know, top whatever, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And shit like that, or even if you know, even after the draft, you know, they just bring players in, they're undrafted, but they just bring players into the squad, yeah, anyways, you know, for and shit and bring and take them to uh, summer league and shit like that. So like, I went to summer league. How was that, that, bro? That was awesome, bro. That was like my first taste of the whole like NBA like vibe shit like that. Just yeah. like training, just laxing and just get all the being gears. a professional. Yeah, just like getting all the gears, getting like noticed in public and shit like that. You know, it was, it was, it was dope. It was Who, awesome. Because I remember you played, if, if I'm not mistaken, Miami. Did you play for Miami one year? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I played for my first, Golden I played State? for Charlotte. Charlotte. Didn't, didn't think, I, I don't think I got on the court at all. And then I left and I went to Golden State. Yeah. Like that was a, cause there was that year there was a summer league, a summer league in Orlando. And then when that finished, there was one in Vegas. Vegas. Yep. Yeah. So I went to the Orlando one with them and then I went to the Vegas one with Golden State. And then I played with Golden State, like got a little bit of burn and stuff like that and practice with it. And then the following year I came back and went with Miami. Yeah. And what, out of those sort of three experiences, which was your favorite and why? Um, I think Golden State. Yeah, I think it was just it was just the vibe there, you yeah. Know? And I kind of carved at my workout as well. Like Man. I was like carving this dude. He was a pretty good fucking point guard at like he was a college. He was another senior in college. Yeah, and his team was like as he went to Wisconsin. Oh yeah. That, so he was like pretty big name, and I like kind of carved him at the workout. So Yo. I was like, yeah. So they're like you know they were, like they were feeling me and stuff. So they played me a little bit and shit like that. And it was just a good vibe at Golden State, but just the culture and shit they all got going on over there. Just yeah. it was a mean buzz. And then obviously after that you. Couldn't, yeah, you didn't get you know uh, picked up any of those teams, yeah. and then you went over to Europe, right? Or to yeah, 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 yeah. Germany, how, Germany. Fish, yeah. Shit, how was that, bro? And how did that come about? Oh, that was a buzzy experience, bro. It's just kind of sitting at home, like jobless, not like you know, like yeah. fucking worried out of my mind, yeah, like oh, what the, fuck, oh, what the fuck am I gonna do? Like fucking, I can't even be a breaker at this point. Like I've already told them no. Oh uh, yeah. And you know, like I'm gonna go overseas and shit like that. I'm gonna chase this NBA thing. Yeah. So like. I'm just sitting there, bro, just like anxious every day, waiting on a phone call from my agent. Right. Finally, one calls like, "Yeah, we got a spot for you in uh, Frankfurt." Fuck, Germany, That's which cool. is like a pretty yeah, which is like a fucking decent city for your first job, bro. Like, for sure, like Frankfurt's pretty booming, bro. There's always shit to do. Yeah, it's Germany, bro. They speak English and shit, and like yeah, especially like the younger generation. They all learn it in school. Mean. So it wasn't it wasn't too bad at all, bro. Like. You played good too. Yeah, I had yeah. a pretty good year, bro. Yeah. They, I was originally signed on for a two year, and then Galatasaray, the team in Turkey, uh, bought me out of that contract, and yeah, I came over and signed and played for them for two years. And how was that, bro? Turkey was Turkey was a whole different world, bro. Turkey was fucking nuts, bro. Like yeah. that was like because Galatasaray is like a huge soccer, like oh true, one of the like powerhouses, like you know, yeah. like, and they got like millions of fans around the world, like. Massive, you know, like yeah. you get noticed everywhere you go. So, like naturally, like a lot of that, like translates over to the basketball club mm. as well, because we're under the under their name and shit like that. Yeah. So everywhere you go, you just get treated like you know, I'm talking. I wasn't lining up for shit. I was like straight in the front of like five star restaurants oh, and shit. shit. You know, if I wasn't, then I like make one phone call. Like Bang. the president of the club will call, but straight in there anyway. I wasn't. Like it was crazy. It was a crazy. It's just different over there, bro. And like Istanbul as well. We're in Istanbul, which is like. Plastic surgery city of the world. Yeah, like yeah. everyone's, everyone's who's anyone's coming over there to like Got spend money, <laughs> getting hair, getting a whole new scalp and shit. Like uh. hair transplants, titties, ass, everything. Like all those girls. Oh, you came in looking girls, different. <laughs> all those girls are coming to Istanbul to get that, like to get that done. And then, like you know, yeah. so like there's and there's like models and shit everywhere. Everyone's got money. There's Arabs and shit. Like just Fuck. flexing twenty four seven in the clubs. It was crazy, bro. Like. Unexplainable. And was that basketball? How was the basketball though? Was it like uh, yeah, a whole that was difference? Lit. A whole like because obviously New Zealand basketball, New Zealand basketball, we, we sort of yeah. play quite freely. Then you go to college and it's like as you say, you train three times a day. You're a fucking straight <coughs> professional. 
but then you go from college ball to playing pro and like you're still like the guy there but like mm. what's the difference like in, in sort of the play just structured as fuck like you know it's like beat beat the beat it to death you know if we score off this one pick and roll you know we might come down and run like six times in a row like oh, i'm like real. structure to the t you oh, know like shit. and they hate it if you go outside you know like obviously guys have like green lights and shit like that to go you know if you can make a play you can make a play obviously but like yeah all the shit we run is just so calculated everything's just like it's a completely different game you know like as opposed to college ball where it's kind of just like run and gun like all fucking right. shoot your shot fucking play as hard as you can mm. like professional european basketball is more just like strategic you know because yeah. everyone's like as good as everyone at that level yeah. you know it's it's really about just having that little edge you know like doing finding that one weakness and whatever whatever the other team does and just exposing that as as much as you can yeah to you in the game pretty much bro would you ever want to go back there and play over yeah. there yeah yeah bro I'm trying to, um, yeah bro i'm trying to have a good year i'm trying to have a good year so i can uh Get get back over there and you know chase the dreams. And have stuff like to, that. bro, because AMBL's got huge, eh? Like it's got. I mean, it's growing by the bro, fucking year. Jim. Every year, it's getting way bigger. Like I remember being a development player when I was like eighteen, just sitting on the bench, and like it was nothing compared to like what it is now. Even the like the crowds that come out, and yeah. even just like the the, the league's different, bro. Like, yeah, I guess there's new owners and shit now, but like yeah. it's just ran so much better. You know, it's it's getting all the notoriety it deserves and stuff. And like even like you know, there's great players and shit coming right. in to play here. Well, I mean, fucking Lamelo Bulbo came over to play. Exactly. Like, what the and fuck? And those young guys, breakers just signed another young, uh, a young French kid. He's like twenty years old. You know, he's like an NBA prospect and stuff like that. Is as he? Well. Yeah. So apparently, he's going to be pretty good. Gee, who's that guy you guys have signed? Um, point guard. No. Aiden Siva. What? That's a mind fuck, bro. Little Uso. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because he, I don't know if he's actually also that. He's more of a. He's actually like he's an American someone, you know. He's like that buzz, like the rock buzz. Yeah, he's like the rock buzz. (laughs) (laughs) Huck is not quite there, eh? Oh, bro. Because he he was a carver in college, eh? Yeah, bro. Louisville. That's right. Louisville, bro. He was legit. He did some time in in Germany. I played him in Germany as well. Oh, I wasn't. He wasn't in Germany when I was there. But when I went to Turkey, we played his team. Yeah, played for Berlin Alba. He's, He's legit, bro. He can fucking play. That's dope. We guys got some big, good sign. Because when do you guys start training again? You guys are already back now. Uh, I think the season starts like October. Oh, sometime. shit. But so preseason will be August, late oof. August. Oh, shit, bro. Yeah, almost. So who, who else you guys got signed? Tom Abbo, obviously. He's fucking. Oh, yeah. He's there until he's about 50, isn't he? Tom, bro, he's 50, but he looks like he's 15, bro. Yeah, no, nah, but he's there. The He'll be age. at the breakers until he's 50. Yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. He's probably got the lifetime deal, bro. He's on the LeBron vibe. <laughs> um, he's got a part ownership. <laughs> Yeah, Abbo. I think Finn signed on again. Obviously, Corey's back. Uh, we got Payton. We got Rob Lowe. We got oh, yeah. Yanni Wetzel just signed as well. He played in Aussie, right? Yeah, yeah. He played for Melbourne this that's year. Right. Melbourne, uh, South East Melbourne. But yeah, that's, yeah, so that's, some that's all I can really think of. Rasmus. Nice. We got Rasmus back. Oh, yo. Yeah, nice, Rasmus nice. Rasmus badge. Yeah, Will. Oh, the other point guy, the Aussie. Will. Oh, yeah. White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck, you yeah. guys are some nice pieces, Listen, bro. bro. We got a lot. We got a lot. That's dope. So, yeah. speaking of Corey, bro, what's it like playing with your bro? And in Auckland, the city you, you fucking grew up with in yeah, front of your yeah, home yeah. fans, what's that like, bro? It must have been like a dream come true almost. Bro. Well, that's half the reason I signed back this year, bro. Because, like, we didn't really get the, like, fucking full in front of, the, like, our city type yeah. vibe, you know, like, in Auckland together. So, like, that's half the reason I even signed back bro because i didn't even really get a like f- proper shot at like what we wanted to do you yeah know? we wanted to be here like with our fan, you know see what we could do and shit Have go to. on a run and shit we played an aussie the whole season last year and so it was kind of shit but yeah true but no nah, it's yeah fucking forgot the question but uh no nah, is it what's it like playing with them bro oh yeah 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 no nah, it's awesome bro he um like no one like pushes me like because that's like that was the ultimate dude I was like always chasing growing up you know just yeah. like always just wanted to be better than him like, like subconsciously like, yeah, yeah, yeah just didn't even like, even consciously bro yeah. I fucking tell him like I'm gonna fucking be better than you <laughs> like you know we fight all the time like you'll never be better than me I'm like fuck you're tripping like I'm gonna be so much better than you so I just like literally like just motivated my whole life to just chase him and chase him and like and now like that I'm old and like can hold my own against him you know like it's it's like you know it's, it's like came to fruition you know type of thing for sure nah and I think you guys complement each other well you guys mm. well you guys are completely different players right yeah yeah you for know? sure it's way different it's games crazy, way opposite. different games 
It's fucking yeah. yeah, it's all, it's crazy, bro. But now nah, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching you guys play this season, bro. Fuck, yeah. the only the only piece you're missing is BJ Anthony, bro. Shit, come BJ, on, <laughs> bro. BJ can get in some type of shape, bro. We'll be we'll be looking alright. Fucking bro. a. All right, we'll do some of these Q and A's, bro, because I got a few. Uh, here we go. To get the IG up. All right, first one is oh, let's go. Remember Seattle? Okay, Seattle. He Seattle. He said. Where do they see themselves if Big Steve is rocking for a Tall Blacks World Cup campaign? Ooh, that's a great question. That is a good question. When we say Steve, just for people that don't know Big Steve, it's Stephen Adams. Right. I think if we had everyone healthy, Isaac, Steve, myself, Corey, Tom Evercombe, you know, even guys like Ruben, Tom Vodonovich, that's Tom V. He's been doing yeah. it. Isaiah Liafa. Bro, whooping. Um, Shay. Oh, bro. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, even Jack Salt, guys like that. Yanni now. Yanni's Kiwi as well. Oh, is it? Yeah, bro. Oh. Um, I think we would be legit, bro. Yeah. I think we would be legit. I think we would give Aussie a mean run, honestly, bro. For sure. With your best squad. I think we would give Aussie a mean run if we had our best squad. But yeah, like we could go on a run for sure. We would at least make the Olympics, but we could at least qualify. You mm. know what I'm saying? We could at least qualify for the Olympics. So, I mean, who knows what we could do, honestly? And I mean, having a presence like that inside is just fucking, yeah. you know, second to none, especially with his experience. Bro. I mean, and even without him, like in the last tournament we played, when we went to the World Cup and stuff, like even the games leading up to the World Cup and the World Cup, like we were sticking around with like world class teams and shit like Serbia and stuff. If we just had Steve to like guard Jokic and shit like that, you know, like. And he fucking and fucking Boban, like, because we just couldn't guard, yeah. do anything about those two. Yeah, like, you we just can't, can't do anything, you no. know. At least Steve could, like, you know, lock him up, a, you know. Yeah, do his thing. Something. But, yeah, no, it would be legit. What are your thoughts on him not playing, bro? Obviously, he's got his reasons. See, that's the thing. I don't like, I don't un, I don't know the reasons or understand the reasons. For yeah. me, it's like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's bullshit. Like, that's weak to me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't know the reasons. So, yeah. like, if the reason's legit, then I feel it, you yeah. know? And, like, I mean, I've hold, held grudges and shit before, you yeah. know? I'm not, I'm not no saint. Like, you know, I don't know, I've, I've burnt bridges and shit like that, too. But, like, f- from the outside looking in, if you don't know, if there's no reason or, you know, if it's you know, it's weak or reason or whatever, you just don't feel like it or, you know, doesn't want to get injured, then it's fucking soft. Yeah. But, Come I mean, play with the like, bros, though. Come play, bro. Put on for the country. But I feel you. If it's if you got a legit reason, I feel it. Mm. Well, fuck hope, Dave. I mean, one, sorry, one day, if we see him out there, that'll be fucking legit, yeah. bro. Sure. Hopefully, while he's fucking still dope, too. Like, while he's yeah, in, you know, like, he's I'm in sa- peak physical condition and shit, you know? Not no, like, end of career type shit. Like 37 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't give us no shit like that. <laughs> bro, come on. Uh, 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 favorite NBA. Give them what they want. Bro. Favorite NBA player. Ooh, bro, that's a tough one. I think this year, bro, I think Booker might have just took over as my favorite NBA player. Especially when he's going home and smashing Kindle. <laughs> that too, bro. <laughs> that man is hitting crazy. He's hitting on and off the he's court. He's getting bro. buckets everywhere. You, you got you to, gotta, you know, you can't hate on that, bro. You got to appreciate that. Yeah. But other than that, bro, Kyrie was was my favorite player to watch. Just because of uh, his handle, just his whole all-round game. Yeah, just his game, bro. Just his ability, bro. Everything mm. he does. It's crazy. Favorite memory at college? Favorite memory. Ah. <laughs> Favorite that? memory I can share? Or? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro, favorite memory would probably, outside of those things, would probably be going to the tournament. Yeah. I think that was like the sweetest, sweetest uh, shit for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, this one's from Sunny. So, Sunny, Sunny, the bro, my Sunny. dog. And this is quite a beaver one. Um, explain the Spain pick and roll coverages. <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> the Spain pick and roll coverage. Spain is just like a like an on ball ball screen. Yeah, and then like somewhat like a shooter comes up the back and sets a sets a back screen for the guy who set the ball screen. Oh shit! You know what I'm saying? Screen so like a lob. Then. So the boy, the guy with the ball comes off is like a lob. Yeah. Playing for the lob, playing for, obviously playing for your bucket off the pick and roll first, playing for the oh. lob or the or the dish second, yeah. and then third kick back to the oh, to the guy shit. who set the screen, the back screen, and then he popped to the three. And then, uh, so, that's like yeah. standard over there. I mean, if by European, that's everyone. Runs, that's, everyone's yeah. got that. Everyone's got that. Even uh, even over here, name and bound stuff. Everyone was, we we came up against that quite a few times this year. Yeah. Uh, another one from Sunny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's go, Sunny. Hardest point guard you've ever guarded, and why? 
Kyrie Irving or Derrick Rose? Oh, sh- oh, that's right. Holy fucker moly. Because you played yeah. the, them at World Champs, eh? And this is when Derrick Rose came... Oh, maybe Steph as well. Steph was on that team too. Um, this is when Derrick Rose just came back from the knee too, like the first time. So like... He wasn't like all the way out, so he still had a little gas on him. Like, bro, that dude, like, when he starts just from a standing still, bro, it's impossible. It's For real? superhuman, bro. You understand why he's like injured, mm. bro, because he's fucking freak, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's fucked but, yeah, up. Yeah, those three for sure. And I blocked Kyrie's shit off the backboard. <laughs> you can look that up too. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it like, G? Just, you know, the whole day getting up, you, you, you know, you're about to fucking mark. The best players yeah, yeah, yeah. on nah. the planet. See, that's that that game pissed me off though because as soon as we went to like film from the game, like we were acting like we were gonna lose. You know, like uh, coaches like you know like yeah. telling us like you know everyone's gonna get to play today oh. tomorrow. You're like, you're like everyone's gonna so fuck. They know they the coaches at that time fucking hurt my feelings going into that because like I, I wanted to fucking play and fucking play hard, you know, yeah. and like fucking upset the world and shit like that, you know, like call Same. me crazy, <laughs> call me crazy or whatever. But like you know, I like to hoop, like I like to compete, you know, I'm ready to go, and you know, like fucking from the from the jump, bro, we're like everyone's gonna get to play, you know, you, you, we don't need to watch film on these guys, you know, these guys because you watch the NBA, and like you know, like like fuck it's so annoying, here. yeah, bro. bro, it was whack, bro. So then we played the game, bro, and, like, trying to play hard and shit like that. And then, like, subs are just rolling in and out because, you know, everyone's getting, f- like, fuck. What the fuck that is that? That shit pissed me off. That shit pissed me off. Fucking A. Well, look at Nigeria. That is big. Exactly. The Nigeria fuck? ass just beat their ass. Yeah, fuck, that's annoying. Um, If you didn't play basketball, it's a good one. What would you do? Oh. Bro. I don't know, bro. I've got no backups, bro. I'll probably be I'll probably be into like white collar crime or something like that. Bro. <laughs> like it, tax, tax evasions or something like that, you know? I'll just be I'll just be get into it. You know, I'll just be get to it. Entrepreneur uh, yeah. entrepreneur if you will. <laughs> Street pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh this is for this hey, I had to say the question, but you got about five of these. Are you single? <laughs> I'm single. And Holla at me. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, ladies? Slide on my shit. Yo, I'm not being funny. There's about six, seven people in here asking, are you single? And some of them, yeah, it's, yeah anyway, some of them yeah, have yeah. zero followers and zero following. So, Ooh, yeah. this is the shadow accounts. You know, they don't, those are probably baddies, bro. They don't want to, they don't yeah, want to expose themselves. Exactly, like, exactly. Uh, <laughs> bro. Uh, here we go. Uh, what's oh, what's uh, there's another one? What's what's the hardest offense you've ever had to guard? Would it be that USA team? I mean, yeah, bro. They just got fucking horses running around the court, you know, like and just throw. And they got like they had like AD Kenneth Reed, so oh, it's just bro. throw it anywhere near the backboard, they'll go catch it. You know, just sling arm it and go go catch your arm that bitch in, bro. So yeah, for sure. And then and then they got like dudes who fucking. Derek Rose would just gas you on the, you know, run around you and shit, run circles and stuff. after his knee thing. Holy fuck, that's crazy. Tough. Definitely did. For sure. oh, I have to ask this one too. What what do you what are your current thoughts about basketball New Zealand? Oh shit. That's a controversial topic. Fucking eh. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but, but nah fuck I'm not scared. Fuck him. Um <laughs> <laughs> I don't, personally I you know Personally, uh, it's probably not. Go- I don't think it's going in the in the greatest direction. You know, I think I heard this. Didn't they just get a new owner and what? Uh, the, the, the owner left. So I mean, that's a little uh, little shady, considering there was little uh, whispers and stuff going on about that. But I mean, I mean, me personally, I just stay out of it, bro. You know? yeah, I'm not. I'm not, sure. I'm not getting involved with Tall Blacks this year. Um, Obviously, more just because of everything that's going on in the world, you know, and they want you to get vaccines and all that yeah. type of shit, quarantine and yeah. traveling right now is like hectic. So, fuck that, you don't yeah, be stuck in all that. I mean, I just, I mean, I stay out of all that type of shit. I, I just like to hoop, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as long as we're there, we're getting taken care of, we're at the tournaments, we're fucking, you know, living, you know, respectably, shit like that, you know, we're in nice, you know, st- standard hotels and shit like that, you know, tra- transport's decent and shit. Like, I don't really give a fuck, yeah, bro. I just, I'm fun, there bro. to hoop, bro. Yeah, fair play. And I, but I also think, like, <clears throat> I said the same thing to Corey and a few other people that, um, you know, 
basketball is the fastest growing sport in New Zealand. Yeah. That's you know? why it's so upsetting. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, I just don't think, personally, you know, from the outside looking in and obviously being inside the basketball New Zealand for a while, yeah. I, I just don't think they have the, um, the morals in the right place and they're not actually there for the players. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. with the whole NBL shit that happened. Not the one that's been, who's currently happening there right now, but the one yeah. that was up in Auckland. And they had like a week to for preseason, and then some of the ACL because you know, like obviously, if you don't have fucking proper preseason and shit, that's gonna happen, you know. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just don't think they look after the players, and why the fuck are the players getting paid so shit? And yeah. all the and I mean, I would love to see what the the basketball is only getting paid. Yeah, yeah. The CEO yeah. and real. the people working there. For real. Me that's what too. I'm saying. Yeah, but I, I mean, Me I, I've always said to like, especially Corey, and I don't know if I've said it to you, they should like almost treat it like a startup. Like you know, I'm coming. And try and get investors to put money into it and just try to build it from the ground okay. up again, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, they need to do something, bro. I mean, mm. it shouldn't, it shouldn't, I don't think it should even, it shouldn't even be a conversation, you know, that's For going real. on. For this real. conversation shouldn't even be going on. Like, they should be getting kids involved and shit like that. They should, you know, guys should be getting treated right and, you know, players should be, be getting paid. And then people might be get fucking playing, like, AKA and Steve Adams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the potty, bro, I like to do this every time. Um, so you're sitting down at a table um, with anyone you want. could be Ooh. the baddest bitch alive. It could, be <laughs> it could be someone that inspired you. It could be, um, Ooh, you know, shit. anyone. Just one? <laughs> you can have two. I can have two? <laughs> yeah, you can have two. Um, and you can have a three-course meal with them, a starter, a main, and a dessert. So firstly, uh, who's the person you'd – oh, who are the two people? You would have Ooh. a That's tough. I got a lot of bays. <laughs> 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 um <laughs> got a lot of bays. For this one. I'm gonna take um India Love. India Love. Yeah, you need to look that one up. <laughs> All right. India Love. Alright, and who's India Love? And who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I recognize that name? Uh, and who's the who's the second person? Oh, and then give me Shaq because I want the business tips as well. You oh know? Wanna, shit! Wanna, yeah, give me, give me put me on game. Smart, smart. Yeah. All right, India Love and Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal. All right, all right. And where would you want to have this three course meal? It can be anywhere in the world. Oh, you could be like homebound. Like. Just said mum's funny. Yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> 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 nah, 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 fuck. Ah. Anywhere in the world, bro. In Turkey, this this restaurant called Zuma. It's the nicest restaurant in the world yeah. I've ever tasted. Yeah, that's where we're going. Zuma yeah. in Turkey. All right. Yeah. So, for your starter with India Love and yeah, Shaquille yeah. O'Neal, what do you? I mean, you don't have to make it, but what are you having with yeah, them? Yeah. Oh, we start light. We start light like some um, some sushis, sashimis, oh. and and whatnot type Sashim? thing. Little, little um, miso soups and shit. <laughs> <gasps> that sounds yeah. good. All right, all right. What about the India? India is a little bit Asian, so you know. Oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> Want to make you feel at home? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're home, baby. You're home. Yeah. <laughs> home away from home. Uh, what about your main, bro? The main chicken, chicken, fried chicken yep. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, where is it from? Like, is it homemade? You can oh, this is Portuguese fried chicken for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Special, special spice, uh, spices and flavors and whatnot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it's lo it's the best like you've ever had. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How so? Portuguese. Like just the spices and shit? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or well, I'd settle for um, Korean fried chicken too. Oh, yeah, that's good. With the sauce, you know, put oh. a little Japanese mayo on that. Oh shit! That fucking bottle. Just squeeze that shit on. <laughs> 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 and uh, what are your dessert, bro? Oh, dessert? Fuck, I'm a dessert head, bro. I fucking love desserts. I'm like a cheesecake. I'm like a cheesecake slash apple pie type of guy, you know? I mean, you can't have more than one because you've got this big motherfucker Shaq. Shaq will probably have a whole cheesecake to himself. <laughs> like those, bro, just fucking one. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do the cheesecake and the apple pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah All yeah, right, yeah. bro. All right, that's awesome. All right, so five-year plan, bro. What do you, what do you uh, hope to see yourself and, I mean, yeah, in five years from now? Five can, years from now. Yep. Bro, five years from now, bro, I'm going to be 31. Ooh, I'm going to be probably overseas in Europe, coming back in between seasons every year to my fucking massive crib in Auckland on the beach, relaxing with my family. Oh, bro, that's that's the one, G. Five years from now. That's, that's what I'm going to be here and there. Here and there, fucking A. Nothing beats home, eh, bruv? Nah, gotta stay home, bro. All 
All right, boy. I appreciate you coming on, G. And you know, I mean, I've known you for a while now. Um, fucking seeing what you're doing, and I mean, especially seeing you play with your brother, G. It fucking warms my heart a little bit, eh? Like you know, yeah. being able to see that, watching you guys grow up together. Obviously, fucking going going at it, but it's it's awesome, bro. And you know what you're doing, and I I wish you all the best for the future and get to the NBA, bro, for all of us. <laughs> yeah, bro, got to. Thank you, my all brother. All right, boy. Always appreciate you. Got bro. you. We good. <laughs>